Welcome back to Information Technology Fundamentals. This lecture, we're going to look at behavioral security concepts. We're going to look at the importance of written policies and procedures for ensuring our security. We're going to describe the basic principles for handling confidential information. And we're going to look at privacy and usage in, uh, issues for corporate systems and social media sites. Companies and organizations are going to use policies to help guide employees to work in a secure manner. These policies are written and frequently the employees have to agree to them by signing the, uh, the policies and procedures. Uh, the most common one is an AUP or an acceptable use policy. Most every business has uh, that to begin with. And depending on the type of uh, organization, you may have more policies beside, beside that. These policies will also vary by job duty. So the policy is an overall statement of intent. Inside of the policy or what generates it are standards. So a standard method which we're going to evaluate the compliance of the policy. Uh, procedures which are going to be uh, frequently step-by-step -step instructions on how to do certain uh, tasks. And we have guidelines where there is no policy or procedure, but the situation uh, occurs and has not been fully addressed. So when we have that type of situation pop up, we're going to have something called a guideline. And generally speaking, a guideline is not going to have consequences if you don't follow it exactly. Whereas a procedure, if a company says, here are the four steps you must take to do this, uh, they may decide if you don't follow the proper procedure to implement further training or do something, uh, some other disciplinary action. The HR department in most businesses are tasked with recruiting and managing uh, people. But along with that, we have to have policies for the hiring and the working and the uh, firing or retiring or separation, we like to call that, of an employee. Really important because uh, when we hire somebody, we have to have a way to ensure they have the the uh, proper permissions to do their job, but do not have too many permissions. And while they're working, these permissions may change. Uh, their job responsibilities may change slightly. So we have to have policies and procedures in place when someone needs to change the permissions or change the resources they're working with. And uh, when somebody separates for, uh, from a company, we have to ensure that they no longer have access to anything at that point. Uh, this is a common failure of many businesses where somebody leaves the company, especially when they retire and nobody ever goes back to ensure they no longer have access and that their user account is uh, deactivated. So some typical policies we're going to find in our uh, handbook would be privilege management, uh, data information handling, uh, our incident response, how we the acceptable use of the company for their devices and services, and internet access. You know, things will be described in there, especially for individual users, uh, about uh, webs what they can or cannot do on the website. And you have to assume, if you're working for a company, that all this is monitored, and every website you visit and every inter interaction you have with your computer is likely monetary. And along with these policies, there's going to be some sort of disciplinary procedures if you don't follow the policies as outlined. Companies have to have a policy and procedure for handling confidential information. Of course, the first step in this is someone has to classify the documents that are at a company. There's many ways to do this, but that is the first step. Now, typically, once an organization has set up the policy for what is sensitive, what is not, the owner or the creator of the document is responsible for classifying it. So we have to have training so our employees recognize and know how to handle the confidential information. And for example, if we have a document that has uh, personally identifiable information from somebody, whether an employee or from a customer, uh, maybe that has to be stored in a separate uh, location than a regular work. 
Uh, we also have to ensure that our password policy is up to date, and we have to identify all documents that have personally identifiable information and ensure that they are handled correctly. And beyond that, the company is going to have uh, confidential information. Usually we might call that trade secrets or intellectual property. That has to be uh, secured. And any customer confidential information. It would not be unusual to have some personally identifiable information from our customers, and we have to ensure we take care of that uh, appropriately. So, acceptable use policy I mentioned earlier. Uh, so it's used by businesses to govern employee use of their systems and service providers. Uh, it's going to determine what fair use of those devices are. And there's going to be rules of behavior. Um, and beyond that, uh, we're going to see in current acceptable use policies a bring your own device uh, policy inside of the acceptable use policy. So where, when is it appropriate to use your own device for email to access work information? And if we decide to do that with a device, uh, how we're going to uh, monitor and make sure that it's not compromised. All companies have to have a privacy policy both for their employees and for their customers. Uh, they have to state how they're going to safeguard it. And there's laws. Now, laws are going to vary by state. So what is true in Ohio may not be true in Indiana. So you have to uh, look at where the data is stored and the laws that apply to it. Companies will would not be unusual for a company to have some type of workplace sur surveillance, especially on the doors coming in and out, but also on those areas of the company where sensitive information is stored. In the IT department, we may find that the uh, server room uh, where all the data is stored is constantly monitored as well. Uh, each business, based on their use case, will decide how they're going to, how and what they're going to surveil. Our employees and uh, customers have an expectation of privacy. Uh, so uh, this brings up a lot of issues, especially around social networking. What a person posts on their social media, should a company be able to look at that and should they be able to uh, implement disciplinary action? Uh, there's no clear-cut rule on this at the moment. Uh, as a employee of a company, you should try to be aware of what the social networking policy is. So again, back to use of your data. So as a user of social networking sites and internet search provider and web search en engines, uh, we do have an expectation that they keep our information private as well. Um, but we know uh, that frequently these things, our information is sold. There is, of course, uh, regulations and privacy uh, rules coming along. Uh, there's the GPDR in Europe. The United States still is mostly state-driven, although there are some proposals that may come through the federal government going forward. So we looked at the importance of uh, policies and procedures to ensure that we have security. We looked at the basic uh, principles for handling confidentiality, and we looked at privacy and usage industry or usage issues for corporate systems and internet and social media.